N4 H and H here. Welcome to my channel. I want to talk about 60 meters. I had a question come up recently that prompted me to shoot this video to explain um, 60 meters. It's it can be a little bit confusing, especially for a, a new um, person who has uh, just joined our hobby. And uh, and in a parti in particular, the question was uh, pointed at the Yaesu FT891. So I have mine sitting here. Uh, for we'll, we'll use it for an illustration. So a little background on 60 meters. <clears throat> uh, we've had it since uh, early 2000s, and um, I want to give you a little bit of a background. Allowing amateur operators use of the 60 meter band was fiercely opposed by the National Telecommunications and Information Administration. We just call them NTIA for short. Uh, the ARRL argued that the 60-meter band could bridge a much-needed gap for use by amateur radio operators involved in emergency communications when 80 meters is too short and 40 meters is too long. You know, it's that in-between range. And those of you who may not have uh, operated 60 meters yet, it is, it is really a great band to bridge that gap. Also, it uh, works pretty well on mobile. I use I use 60 meters on uh, on my mobile rig, another FT891 that's in my truck. So anyway, uh, the FCC went to the mat for the amateur radio community, and they fought the NTI until they agreed to give us five lightly used areas of spectrum that they would share. Note the word share. The NTIA considered each of these five portions of spectrum as channels. Now let me just mention that. That portion of the band, that 5 megahertz uh, spectrum there, is used by officials, you know, government uh, agencies, th things like that. So this is why, you know, we share the channel. Um, okay, so, you know, the NTI considered each of these five, again, get this, these five portions of the spectrum um, are considered as channels. So it's we would say channelized. It's different than the rest of our amateur uh, bands where we just dial up a frequency on our VFO. Um, now, the agreement required the amateur radio operators not exceed 2.8 kilohertz of transmit bandwidth. So when we modify an older radio, for example, to operate on the 60 meter band, I've done that with my old F Yaesu FT890, I did it with my FT920. You have to perform the Mars mod, you know, and then you can transmit on 5 megahertz. Well, what I did was I programmed those the 10 uh, 60 meter uh, channels, if you will, as they call them, uh, into memory locations on those rigs. Now, you'll notice here, beginning at uh, 501 and going up through 510, the FT891 from Yesu comes pre-programmed with those channels, and and you you can't change it. It is the way it is. Well, on older rigs, though, this would not be available without a Mars mod, and, and then again, you've got to be careful that you're programming, operating uh, the, on the correct frequencies, and, you know, if you're programming them into memory, make sure you get everything set correctly. So, we'll, di we'll dive a little deeper into this, uh, but I just want you to remember, if you're modifying an old radio, be mindful of your transmit bandwidth that you don't exceed 2.8 kilohertz. Now, a lot of the older radios... Uh, you know, they were shipped with a, a 2.8 uh, kilohertz transmit bandwidth. That's just the way they were set and it was fixed. Modern radios, you know, we can go into the menu, like on this 5000 here, and I can change my transmit bandpass filter to be, uh, you know, 1 to 2900, 2 to 2800. You know, you've seen that probably in your rigs. Okay, now I'm going to attempt to clear up the confusion concerning the 60 meter band. So I'm just going to use channel 1 as an example. Channel 1 of 60 meters has a center frequency of 5332 kilohertz or 5.332 megahertz. Now that means that our 2.8 kilohertz of transmit bandwidth must fall within plus or minus 1.4 kilohertz of bandwidth. For example, our transmit audio on channel 1, upper sideband, must not extend beyond 5.3334 megahertz. That is, uh, take 5.332 there and add 1.4 kilohertz. So it'd be add 1.4 to 
to this two here, and that's gonna give us 3.4. So 5.33, 3.4. Well, that's a problem if we're gonna, if we have a 2.8 wide, uh, 2.8 kilohertz wide transmit audio, which is what we, you know, that's pretty common for all the other HF bands. That'd be, you know, I, I would consider that to be a norm, uh, the norm. So that's gonna present a problem. Okay, well, just hold that thought. We'll go. We'll go forward here. So, uh, if we transmit using upper sideband modulation, which is the requirement, um, by the way, on the 60 meter band, let me give you a little background on that. Ham radio operators are the only radio operators that use lower sideband. So, all commercial, marine, all the other uh, radio services, when they're using a sideband, they use upper sideband. We're unique in that. Um, that's something I learned today. Just thought I'd pass along. So uh, anyway, get back, so back to this discussion. If we transmit using the upper side, using upper sideband modulation on the center frequency of cha of the channel, so in this case 5.332 megahertz, with a 2.8 kilohertz transmit bandwidth, we will be 1.4 kilohertz beyond our band limit. Or it, it, the, really, it's not a band limit; it's a channel limit. If you know, really, because these are it really in between our channels and you'll notice on the 60 meter band it's almost it's not like uh, set intervals between those channels these were randomly selected not randomly selected but they seem that way to us the NTIA came back to the FCC and said well these areas of the spectrum are lightly used by us so we're willing to compromise and let you guys share uh, these areas so that's the deal so uh, but again, if I'm if I'm if my center or my carrier point, you know, in sideband, we we have a what you see on your VFO is the is the carrier frequency, but you suppress the carrier for sideband, and for that matter, if we're on upper side, if we're transmitting upper sideband mode, we're also suppressing the lower sideband. So at 2.8 kilohertz, we are going to be outside of the limits of that channel. Uh, channel one, at, uh, which has a center frequency of 5.332, and now this is where the confusion comes. I, 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 hang with me here. You gotta, you gotta understand the difference between center frequency and the carrier frequency. They are different, or it can be. All right. So let me continue. So above and below our 2.8 kilohertz of allowed bandwidth are portions of the spectrum that are allocated for government use. We cannot and must not transmit in the, these portions of the five megahertz band. If this still seems confusing, all right, let's consider one of the uh, questions on the amateur radio exams. On the 20 meter band, the maximum frequency that we can set our VFO to is 14.347 when using upper sideband. The VFO display is going to indicate where our suppressed carrier will be centered. 14.347. Furthermore, the lower sideband will be suppressed, like I mentioned er earlier. So when we transmit our 2.8 kilohertz wide upper sideband modulation uh, will not extend beyond 14.350. You know, 2.8 gives us a little bit of a buffer there of forgiveness if you if you think of it. We're on 14.347, we're 2.8 kilohertz wide. So we're just shy of 14.350, which keeps us for sure legal. All right, though your radio might be able to transmit with a bandwidth of three kilohertz, uh, setting the transmit bandwidth to 2.8 helps ensure that your modulated signal does not extend beyond the band edge. Okay, that's the deal. Many radios from the past have shipped with a, with a default transmit bandwidth of 2.8 kilohertz, like I mentioned earlier. So. I think that's a reasonable bandwidth. I mean, audio quality sounds pretty good at 2.8. I mean, this, we're not trying to sound like, um, or at least I, I don't think we are trying to sound like the uh, the disc jockey on the FM uh, music station. Uh, you know, really, that's actually a whole subject of another discussion. But that's actually uh, not good when you're trying to have radio communications. Too much uh, low end is. Uh, uh, well, it's, it's, uh, it uses up a lot of energy that could otherwise be shifted into areas of the audio spectrum that would help you cut through pileups and things like that. That's why you'll hear people thin out their audio uh, in DX. 
you get a little bit more use of the uh, power that you have that way. Okay, so um, let me move on, trying to keep this video under 15 minutes. The, um, so <clears throat> now, let's apply all this background to 60 meters. The official center frequency of channel one is 5.332 megahertz, as you see it up there on the FT891. Now assume you have an older radio and you're gonna, you've performed the Mars mod and you're going to set it up so you can transmit on five megahertz. And let's say as a bonus, you're going to assign the 10 60 meter channels to memory positions in your older radio. To, that way, you know, it kind of mimics how these newer radios have those uh, frequencies already programmed in there from the factory. Now in order for your 2.8 kilohertz wide upper sideband modulation not to extend beyond 5.3334 megahertz, taking the center frequency, adding 1.4 above, uh, so you wouldn't be able to do 2.8 kilohertz of bandwidth. So what we do, and the FCC has allowed us to do this, is we will actually move our carrier uh, for sideband now. CW stays right here. When you use 60 meter CW, let me refocus there, uh, your carrier is right there at 5.332. But when you're gonna use sideband, you have to uh, fix it to where your 2.8 kilohertz of bandwidth starts at a lower frequency because it's upper sideband, therefore it's going to extend uh, upward. you gotta, you got to start lower. So what uh, the FCC has allowed us to do is um, transmit 1.5 kilohertz below what, what the NTIA considers to be the center of the channel. Okay, so hang with me on that. This is where it gets confusing center of the channel for CW happens to be also where the carrier is. But for sideband, we can't use that as the center of the channel because our upper sideband is 2.8 kilohertz wide. It'll put us outside of our limit. So what we do is we just shift our carrier point. Uh, where, where, now the carrier is going to be suppressed, but we shift it down one and a half kilohertz. Now, I know that, and that part's kind of confusing because, it, you know, they said, well, you can't be more than 2.8 kilohertz wide. Uh, but, um, you know, which would mean it would technically what we would do is from here we would go down 1.4 kilohertz and then that would give us a full 2.8 kilohertz of bandwidth using 5330.5, right? 5.330.5 as our carrier, where our carrier, if we were going to transmit a carrier, where it would be, okay? We're going to suppress it in the lower sideband. So I, I hope I've cleared that up. So we have to do a little trickery here to be able to operate on these 60 meter channels and not exceed that 2.8 kilohertz bandwidth. So we we basically just have to shift where the uh, carrier is. So again, that's where the confusion is. On CW, we're on 5.332. But on sideband, we're going to shift down to 5.330.5, but the carrier will be suppressed. And then we've got from 5. Um, 330.5 all the way up to 5.333.4. Remember, that is the full uh, spectrum allotted to us there for that particular channel. So um, it just appears the FCC has maybe given us a full three kilohertz if you think about it, because they allow us to go one and a half kilohertz below the center of the channel to uh, use as our um, carrier uh, frequency. Again, we're not going to transmit a carrier. So now that being said, let me show you what I did with my FT891 because it ships from Yesu, just like you see here on my 5000 down there below. That is, uh, let, me, let me move over here. This is channel one sideband in the 5000, 5.332. On the 5000, whether you be on channel one or channel six, it displays 5.332. But internally in the radio, Yesu to keep us legal, to help us out here, Autom just they just pre-programmed it so that f even though it says 5.332, and there's a little verbiage in there from the NTIA apparently um, that says the radio ha it should display the center ch channel frequency, okay? So Yesu's complying with that, but what they're doing inside the radio is they're actually making the radio transmit on 5330.5. Now, what I did with mine, you'll notice I've actually got my sideband channels programmed to display the actual frequency. And the way I did that was if you press the memory button up here, 
um, sorry, the third button over from the left, like you're going to write to the memories. See, you can then hit EDT for edit, and you can go through here and tag. You see what I did? I just put in five. Then you uh, tap, press in on the multi button. I put a dot, tap, move over. Oops, move over. If it's flashing, you can move. If it, when you tap it again, you can change it. So I just went through here and I made the display. Again, this could be my favorite repeater. You could say my rag chew frequency, whatever you want to put in these memories for a tag. In other words, you're masking over the actual frequency and you're putting in something meaningful to you. So what I did was I just used that to go in here and put what the actual carrier frequency is that I'm suppressing on the sideband channels. And I went through and did that for all of them. And I even, you know, out here at the end, I even put that it was single sideband. You could have even put S, uh, USB if you wanna, you know, remind yourself that it is upper sideband. Now, Yesu took care of all the, the programming of, to make sure that it is exactly on that frequency and that it is upper sideband and that the bandwidth is 2.8 kilohertz. They did that for us when they made the radio and programmed it. So we don't have to worry about that part. But anyway, I just wanted you to see, let me press the back button and get out of that and back again. So that's why mine, out of the box, 501 is gonna look just like 506, memory position 506. It'll just say 5.332.00, but it won't say CW. It will say that it's USB. But um, if by using the, the tagging feature, and again, third button over, press it, this is how you store memories, but you can't overwrite these, by the way, they're protected. And then just hit edit and go through there with your multi knob, move it with the multi knob. And then when you, when you like where it's set, press it in, it'll move you to the next one. Press it to edit it, press again, and again, just keep going across. If it's blinking, you're not able to edit it. If it's blinking, you're, you can move it left and right to which character you want to set. Press it and then you can set the character press it again, it starts blinking and goes to the next uh, character slot. So that's how I made mine show the actual carrier frequency. Now, why did I do that? You know, when I was up on a mountain the first time using this radio, I posted a spot for soda to tell everybody I was on uh, 5.332 because that's what my display said. And I had a guy come in there and chew me out, said, you're not on frequency. You said you were on 5332, you're on 5330.5. And I realized, yeah, you know, you glance down at that radio and, um, you know, you're up on a mountain, you're typing this into a phone or APRS uh, if you're using, you know, that, that feature on HT. And so I just typed what I saw. So I just decided I would do this with mine so I would be sure to, uh, to see what frequency I'm on and program it or, or send out my spot. Uh, with with that so because not everybody understands how 60 meters works and because it is different than the rest of the bands and that's why I shot this video now I can't do that with the 5000 it doesn't have the ability for me to assign um, all, all you can do is assign memory numbers you can't do the tag so it is what it is I had a discussion with Yesu about this and I have put a bug in their ear that might it might be helpful since they're pre since they're pre-programming this and they're you know setting it up for us to keep us legal, why not just go ahead and instead of putting 5332 here, just put 5.330.5, put what it really is. Uh, but again, they uh, there's that issue with the NTIA about well you're supposed to be displaying the center of the channel, so honestly I doubt that uh, that anything will ever be done about that. And when you program your own old vintage radio, you can do it, do how you want, because you're not Yesu, you're not obligated to meet some sort of uh, international uh, rule. Okay, so I uh, hope you found the video helpful and uh, informative, and uh, sure appreciate uh, my Patreons. If you want to help out here to keep the channel alive, uh, go to uh, www.patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash my call sign, N4H-N-H patreon.com slash n4hnh and uh, you help me out and I can uh, do more tutorials on uh, other equipment. Okay, thanks a lot. 73 from n4hnh.